Hi, welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about the power of paying yourself first. It's a really important principle, and it's one that most successful people have mastered. Now, it takes a while. I'm going to explain how it gets there, but you should master the principle of paying yourself first. Let me show you what I mean. Now, what most people do, the common financial approach is they pay their bills first, right? Whatever is left goes into savings if there's anything left, and they end up living paycheck to paycheck. And that is a formula or a prescription for disaster. The historical reference of this concept comes from a book called The Richest Man in Babylon by George Clayson, one of my favorite books. And the message is still relevant today. It's a timeless principle. And the importance here is having some accountability, right? It's not just trying to do it on your own, but having a little bit of accountability. And maybe that's self-accountability too. So you wanna allocate money to your own assets, but you have to be aware of your financial situation first. Awareness is the first step to change, as you know, I say all the time. And so realizing the lack of savings that you have for the future is an important realization, right? If I don't have savings, I can't invest for my future. I can't create that passive income, that semi-passive income, that recurring income that's gonna help me to retire or work a little bit less or whatever the case may be for you. Understand that the approach is not the path to wealth, right? The way you're currently doing things if you're paying your bills first and you're paying everybody else except for yourself first is not the right path to financial abundance. And so we want to create that. The pay yourself first principle is the first thing you do is allocate money to assets before you allocate money to expenses. Assets are things that bring you in money, things that accrete or accrue to your net worth and liabilities and expenses take away from those things. Now, most people pay all of their expenses and that leaves really nothing left to save or invest most of the time because most people live right up to the limit of what they make and maybe even a little bit more, right? They charge things on credit cards, and then they get in debt, things like that. The most financially aware people, they understand this. And so I hope you can understand this too. And I want you to understand it. The power of cash flow, though, is so critical, right? A lot of people work hard and what they do is they rely on Social Security or government help in their later years when they can't work as hard, right? And you don't want that to be you. You don't want to just get that small amount that comes from the government. You want to create that wealth while you can. And they're in the situation most of the time because they prioritize other people over themselves, right? They're trying to keep up with Joneses or they're taking care of their kids and their kids' education or they're buying stuff for their kids that maybe their kids don't need. To be wealthy, what you have to do, though, is you have to prioritize investing in income generating assets, cash flow. Cash flow is so critical and it's more important than capital gains assets where you buy and hold and you hope that it goes up in value because a lot of times it doesn't you've got to prioritize income investing really important to have cash flow so there are a couple of ways to do it one of the ways that i like to do and i wrote about it in a book that i wrote several years ago called hacking money and that is to live on 50 percent of your income okay and what that is is you take all of your after-tax expenses and hopefully that's under the 50% of what your income is. And you can live on that. That's the real goal. And that leaves a way to have money left over for savings and education and a contribution and other stuff that's in life that comes up, but it's not part of your typical expenses, right? So you wanna do that. The other way that a lot of people talk about is the 10, 10, 10 plan, okay? That's 10% of whatever you make goes into investing, 10% goes into savings, and that's for emergencies and opportunities to come up. And 10% goes into your charity or your tithing, your contribution, things like that. That's the 10, 10, 10 plan. Each of these plans is good. I prefer the 50% plan. I know it's really hard for a lot of people to live on 50% of what they make, but if you can do it, your life will expand immeasurably and especially over time. So how do you adjust your habits to start to change your life and I think that's a critical thing is, you know, if you want to change your life, you have to change your habits first. And so you first of all have to avoid large debts. So if you're feeling the temptation to grow your household or get another truck or another car, get another big debt under your belt, you know, I want you to try to figure out if there's another way. Don't also use your savings to pay bills because that can be critically bad, right? You can use your savings and the whole point of this is to create savings so that you can invest. Instead, what you should do is you should inspire yourself to earn more, to build up that top line, to get more sales, to get more income. 
and keep your expenses to an absolute minimum if you can. I know easier said than done. Look, I know I've been through all this stuff. I get it. But I'm telling you, if you can discipline yourself to do in this Western society, it's really hard to do because you're getting bombarded thousands of times a day. Buy this and you know, spend money on that. And do you really need them? I look at my closet. I'm like, do I really need all of these clothes? Do I? Do I need them? It's nice to have them. But do I need them? So, and you know, do you really need the brand new car or the brand new truck? Do you need the $50,000 Rolex watch? Do you need it? And, you know, I don't want you to be scarce and I want you to be towards abundance, but you have to be a little bit commonsensical when you start before you can be luxurious. The problem with traditional savings though, right? This is not all about saving. This is about saving as a means to investing. And the problem with traditional savings is that savings will devalue with inflation, especially these days. Inflation is ramping up. I don't care what the government tells you about two, three, four percent. Inflation is way higher than that. Just look at the prices of cars. Look at the prices of houses. Look at the prices of your clothing. Look at the prices of your hamburger, right? A drink at a restaurant. All of these things have gone up in price. That's inflation and that's eating into your savings. Money is a currency. Currency, the word currency comes from flowing right so you have to keep the money moving that means moving from savings into investing and investing has to be more than traditional saving right you can't just save your way in a bank account put it in a cd get five percent or two percent or eight percent and expect your wealth to increase because you have to keep up with inflation you have to educate yourself about inflation by the way so here are some concrete steps to overcome debt let's start with number one. First one stop accruing bad debt bad debt is anything that doesn't make you money bring you in cash flow things that depreciate in value are bad debt right buying a car that immediately loses 30 percent when you dry it off the lot it's not a very sound investment right it's a bad debt organize and list all your debts down like know where your debt is okay keep track of your financial situation track your net worth track your expenses track your income track how much you spend it's really important when you start to report on it to yourself you're like, wow, I didn't realize I spent that much money on cable. I didn't realize I spent that much money on my phone. Whatever it is, you're gonna have some really great realizations. So do that. Follow the 10, 10, 10 plan or the 50% plan that I laid out here. Prioritize paying off your small debts first. Now, this is a piece of advice that a lot of people give. Pay off the small debts first. You have a small debt and you're like, woo, I paid it off, it was only 500 bucks. And I still have the $5,000, the 30,000 debt out there that might even have a higher interest rate on it. I like to pay those off first, but you don't get that feeling of satisfaction when you pay those off first. But if you pay off the small ones, you get them off the list, and then you can start to chip away at the big ones too. That is a good way to do it. You can do it either way, but start paying off some of those debts. I like to pay off the higher interest rate debts first if I can, but I understand the concept of paying off the smaller ones first. And the bottom line is you have to stay consistent and disciplined, right? You have to just chip away. And if you chip away at things, anything in life over time, right? whether it's exercising or making money or learning, you'll be amazed at how you can pick up some knowledge over time in a very short period of time, actually, compared to how long your life is. All right, so here's some clarity on paying yourself first. That doesn't mean taking money and splurging it on a bunch of stuff when you've saved up a bunch of money. That's not the concept we're talking about. We're talking about consciously contributing to your assets and your investments, right? Just we're gonna systematically feed the things that are gonna bring us cash flow eventually. And maybe even now, right? We're gonna we're just gonna feed them. It's gonna be a little bit tough at first to get this habit going, but trust me, it really works. Your money and assets should remain in assets. Now, how do you increase your expenses the smart way? Well, instead of cutting expenses, find ways to afford your expenses, right? Find things that are going to create cash flow to be able to afford your expenses. When you can create enough cash flow to afford your expenses, you're really financially free. So, for example, you want to invest in your assets that cover your desired luxury cost. I remember a story from Robert Kiyosaki and his wife, Kim, was a really good accountability partner for him because he said, you know, I really want a Ferrari. And she's like, great. What asset are you going to buy such that the cash flow will be able to pay for that Ferrari? And he's like, oh, good point. So he ended up buying an apartment complex and had enough cash flow to pay for his Ferrari. And now he won. He got a Ferrari and he got an apartment that gives him cash flow after he paid for the Ferrari. So that's important. Cash flow is really king. Never subtract from your asset column for liabilities. Don't sell off an asset to pay off a bunch of debts. You got an asset, make it work for you, if, especially if it's cash flowing. And don't give in to peer pressure. So often, a lot of what this whole thing stems from is you got to have the latest styles. You got to buy the nicest car. You got to buy a bigger house. You got to have this in your kitchen. 
don't succumb to all that peer pressure, right? What will happen is right now, you might be behind some of your peers, but they're going to be in debt and they're going to have a little bit of trouble keeping up when you start to accelerate your assets because you've paid yourself first. And now you're going to be able to afford your lifestyle because of the choices that you've made. Really important. So what are some final action steps we can take as we wrap this whole concept up? Well, first of all, begin to prioritize yourself financially. Invest in assets consistently and seek the knowledge that you can get and the opportunities that are out there to grow your wealth. If you do that, if you espouse and embrace this principle, pay yourself first, you will reap massive rewards as you go through life. Trust me on that. See you on the next one. Hey, it's Mark Yegi, founder of Light Circle. And if you want to be productive in your life, you've got to get a hold of my daily productivity planner. Now, it's not this whole book. It's just one of the sheets from this book. The whole book is awesome, but just the sheet is really the foundation of what we do. And it's how I get tons and tons of stuff done every week, including writing books and making videos and running hedge funds and all the other stuff that I do. You've got to get this daily productivity planner if you want to massively improve your success. So click on the link below or somewhere on this page, download the thing for free, you put in your email address, we'll send you the link, and then you can start filling it out right away. By the way, after you do it, I give you a little video on how to fill it out because it's got all these really cool tools on it that are really going to massively help you with your productivity. See you on the inside.